Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Kirby Gatto. Welcome to today. We are getting through these dog day of summer. And you're going to love today as you join a Limitless Life Week. Let me just turn the volume down on my Facebook dings. Hold on. It is going to be a phenomenal broadcast. This is going to be one of those that you want to say because it is going to encourage you and strengthen you beyond measure. I cannot tell you how super excited I am about studying the sciences for my new book, The Forbidden Fruit, The Spiritual Disease. It is just more confirmation of scripture and about the power of the truth. Oh my goodness, I love John 8, 32, beyond measure. You shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And how powerful the truth is. It just gets me so super excited because I know this Holy Spirit and the power of God's Word. Oh my goodness. So today, God is going to strengthen you about your destiny and how to continue to hope against hope like Father Abraham in Scripture in Romans 4. He hoped against hope. Hey, Rebecca. Hey, Katie. God bless you. Thank you for joining in. So awesome to have you. And so one of the things that I absolutely love that is beyond measure for me to do, something I've always done even as a young little girl, is cheerlead, okay? I was cheerleader even in middle school and in high school, and I was even a cheerleader sponsor for actually the middle school of my former high of, of my former school and got to take the cheerleaders to the NCAA to the NCA camp. And I just love cheerleading. And where do we see this in scripture? Hey, S H E R R I. We see this in scripture in Romans twelve, eight. It is that gift of exhortation that is to edify the body of Christ. And if the body of Christ ever needed to be edified, it is today. Today. And in the invisible realm, the supernatural, the spirit, we can also look through the lens of quantum physics to just get a microscopic view of what's going on so that we have better understanding and we walk in the power of the truth. That is one of my most favorite things as I'm a very logical person and I just want to grasp. God, I know what your word says, so show me your glory. You know, it's like Moses when he was in that place of the cleft of the rock and he was just hungry. God, I hear you. I feel your presence, but God, I want to see you. You know, there's such a hunger and there's a righteousness that God wants to show himself strong and he wants to show himself to us. He isn't bothered that we want to see more of him. And so he is so gracious to unfold this supernatural display of his glory and how it's operative amongst us and in us that absolutely blows our mind. Hey, Kim Mitchell. Hey, Cheris. Hey, Katie. And so let's get into today a limitless life. Well, you know that I have been a lot in physics actually since 2014 when I did, did year four of God's Bible School, the prophets, that trek. And it was John 1, 5 that the light pierces the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. It cannot overpower it. It is cannot put it out. It is unreceptive to it. And so God had me do the gospel of John with Song of Solomon and physics and mathematics. And I got through eight chapters nearly in that nine session year. And it is just phenomenal. And I just tasted a physics, which I thought there was no way I was going to be able to learn this. And God had me watching this two hour video. And I truly, 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 now this is going to relate to some of y'all are going to relate to this because I'm going to explain something that I was stretched in as it related to science, 
but it's analogous to some of you in relation to your faith, okay? And your faith needs to be strengthened. You need to be edified in your faith today to believe. Oh my goodness, belief is so powerful. And as I explained in Mindfulness, the Mind of Christ, belief is an experienced thought. Where is that thought? It's in the body. Your body has its own mind. It has its own intellect. And we always think that the mind of Christ is up here. The mind of Christ in your temple is in your body. It is in the consecrated body. It is as where Holy Spirit shows you the mind of God and your spirit man is strengthened in that mind and your soul come, becomes washed in the word and the filth and the grime of this world is taken from your person. So I'm going to do a couple things. And so some of y'all have your AC on right now. And it's so funny because in our house, we're about to have our window changed. I don't know if you watched a couple months ago, but they replaced an AC unit in our house and put a new AC unit and it's window units. And I live in a 92 year old, 96 year old, 94 year old building. And so the windows are the original wood windows and they've never been changed and they've had AC units laying on top of it for years. And so that wood has rotted from probably the water that is dripped out of the AC, the condensation. And so they replaced the AC unit over two months ago, but it wasn't approved until like two weeks ago for them to actually replace and cut out the window, the whole wood frame, put in a whole new wood frame and put in new windows. And that's great, except it's not great for right now because that means that we have to go without AC for a couple of days. And I am not going at without AC. And so I said, I'm sorry, we're just gonna have to push it back because there is no way that Rich and I are gonna be in an apartment that is gonna be 99 degrees. It's just no way. And so we need to push it back till it's cooler. So it's not only the AC in our apartment that got fixed, but also the AC in the car is stretched some, I'll, I'll just say that. And of course, it's still under mileage, so it's still under warranty, which is really, really good if it's something mechanical or as it relates to the parts. So that's good. But one of the things I'm doing is getting two air filters, the air filter for the engine and the air filter for the cabin. And so I just keep thinking about airflow, airflow, airflow. Now let's go back to about a week and a half ago when I talked about the mold. The reason that white mold got on the plants and I got rid of it with apple cider vinegar in about two to three teaspoons and 40 ounces of water, pouring it on the plants, it got rid of the mold. But the reason that the mold builds up on those plants is because of the lack of airflow, okay? And so I'm talking about airflow and we, we need airflow in this summer heat, the dog days of summer, okay? And when I think about the dog days of summer, I think about the wolf, the enemy, lying, and he's trying to devour the saints in unbelief by speaking against the truth, by speaking against God's promises. And so God wants me to be your cheerleader today. He wants me to be your cheerleader coach today to just believe, okay? And so one of the things that God showed me as I began to teach on physics in 2014 and write about the Gospel of John with Song of Solomon and physics, whew, beyond measure. And so he had me initially study this particular video of this guy, of this physicist, and I truly believed, I literally thought that everybody that was in that room that was listening to that guy was, they were pretending that they understood. And I was just thinking, they do not understand what this man is saying and they are just pretending. I mean, it really was so preposterous of what I was thinking. And the reason I was thinking that is because I did not understand. My understanding was limited. Woo! Oh my goodness. Some limitations upon your life are because of limited understanding. And let's just say, praise God, it is only the air filter that is the issue and not 
parts to the air conditioner in our car. Well, because I have understanding and I am my father's daughter, I'm very mechanical and engineer-like, I totally get what could be wrong. And because of that, I have understanding that could fix the airflow, okay? Because we're talking about your faith. And I remember in year one of God's Bible School of the Prophets, which will actually be the next book that comes out in God's Bible School of the Prophets, are uh, the Spirit of Understanding, book five. Oh my goodness, and the anatomy of the ear. Whew, it is so powerful. And so the purpose of that dimension of Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Understanding, is to cause you to see your destiny, to see your anointing, to see your faith. And so many lack understanding. The Word of God says that faith comes by hearing the Word. And that word hearing in Greek means understanding. See, you can hear, but not hear and hear. Amen. You can hear up here in your head all day long, but it's never going to get to your body to be an experienced thought. Because your reality is in your body. And of course you take thoughts captive, 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 8. And you bring those thoughts down because you don't want those negative thoughts to get into your body. Because if it gets into your body, it becomes your reality and it dampens your faith. And so watch this. Watch how powerful this is. And so I was watching this physicist teach and I watched this two-hour video I don't know, maybe about five to six times. And I am just sitting there every time, like I've done with every subject matter that I've studied in science. And I am just watching and listening. And I am thinking, none of these guys know what this man is talking about. They're just pretending to know what he's talking about. How many of you know that you can dampen the power of the message if you don't understand? And your unbelief can infect others. Thank goodness I wasn't in that room and saying to all those attending, oh, y'all are just pretending like y'all understand this guy. Y'all don't know what y'all are doing, y'all. I mean, your lack of faith, your lack of understanding can keep others from hearing truth and from understanding truth. And so all of a sudden, Rich said, because on Netflix at that time was something about particles, something particle. And so we started watching it, and it was about what I was studying in physics, and it was actually a documentary, okay? And so I'm, I start, and I said, Rich, I said, oh my goodness, this is what God has had me study with the Gospel of John, is this physics. How many of you know, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. He was God Himself present, originally with God in the beginning. And that nothing is created that has not been made through the word. And that in him is life. And that life is the light of men. And that light shines in the darkness. And it pierces it. And the darkness cannot overcome it. It cannot overpower it. It is unreceptive to it. So that light is the understanding of truth. To know the power of Jesus Christ, the power of the word, that he is more powerful than your circumstances. And so watch this. As we started watching the documentary, all of a sudden, just like law school, I would be in law school with new subjects every, every semester, and I wouldn't understand what was going on for the first month. And then after a month, all of a sudden, understanding would just come in. And I call it mapping, where I would just drive and navigate the subject matter with such grace and power and knowledge and wisdom. Well, guess what? When I was walking, watching that documentary, it was just like my mind and person was opened up. And it was like water came down on me. And in one moment, I understood everything that that man had been teaching in physics. I understood it. And what's so amazing is the very man that I had been learning from with physics and couldn't get it first, he's in the documentary. And he comes on and I'm like, Rich, that's the guy I've been watching. 
and they say he is the next Einstein. And I went, no wonder, no wonder. But look, saints of God, I didn't let my lack of knowledge, my lack of understanding stop me and limit me. And I cannot tell you how many of you, the same thing that I experienced in trying to learn physics and learning physics, how much I could have allowed that to limit me, limit me. And I didn't, I didn't. I just put my members, because because you do not have a clue of the intellect of your body and how powerful it is. And that when you're walking in the power of the Spirit of God, and you're walking in the Spirit where your spirit man is strong, and you're led by the Spirit, of the intellect of the mind of Christ is in here. It is in your body. And there are no limitations. And there is such understanding upon your members. And you can't even articulate it. Just like when I started watching that documentary. And I, I knew it like instantly. Instantly. And I was just blown away. And I was watching it. And I would look at Rich and I'm like, oh my goodness, I understand this. I get it. Okay. Well, because I get it. It went from here and it went into an experience of while I am watching that documentary, I am experiencing the excitement. I am like a cheerleader clapping because I understand. So imagine when you get understanding. Hey, Kimma, imagine when you get understanding. Okay, this is so powerful. This is what it's like. Hey, Sabrina. It is as like you, it is as though you are a cheerleader. Hey, Donna, you're a cheerleader and you are just getting the word and you are just clapping with your hands and praising God because of how awesome and how mighty he is. Listen, your faith is not based on your, on you. Your faith is based on how much you understand about your God. That although the circumstances look very tough, your God is able. Your God is greater. Greater is Christ Jesus in you than he that is in this world. And so today, as we look at breaking barriers and limitations, as I talk about the spirit of understanding, Isaiah 11, 2, and that, that spirit of understanding, and you see it in 1 Samuel 25 so beautifully, and this is where I'm going to end, that spirit of understanding you see on Abigail, as Abigail ministers, and she's a cheerleader to David. David is just so stressed out because Abigail's husband, ended up just doing him wrong. And so he just is having a bad day. He's just having the dog days of summer, so to speak. And he wants to kill every male on the property, on the premises, because he's that discouraged. He's that disappointed. And so all of a sudden, this woman, Abigail, has the spirit of understanding. And she sees David's future when David just needed a cool air. When David needed the airflow of Holy Spirit, he needed someone with the spirit of understanding because the spirit of understanding not only causes you to see your destiny, it causes you to see the destiny of other people and to speak, to be that air conditioner in the heat of summer, to blow that cool air and that reprieve and that anointing that grace upon them where they just feel refreshed. And that is indicative of the very breath that God breathed into Adam, a life-giving spirit. That's what God breathed into him. And so Abigail said to, king, said to David before he was king, look, you're going to be a king of Israel. It's going to happen, David. 
and you are so bundled in with God. You are so bundled in with God that basically it's very hard to see where you start and where God starts, that y'all are just so one. Y'all are seamless. So saints of God, this is the power of your trial, is that your trial, like in the heat and the scorching trying of your faith, your trial is to know God so richly that when people look at you, they see Christ, they see God, and it's seamless. There's no seam between you. It is just seamless. It's beautiful. And in that power, oh my, get ready, because there is a fresh anointing, Psalm 9210. There is a new anointing by Holy Spirit. So be unlimited in who you are and know the power of your faith and know the power of the spirit of understanding. And the spirit of understanding is the dimension of Holy Spirit himself and you walking in that cool of the day. In fact, in Isaiah eleven three, it says that God made Jesus, he will make Messiah of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And that word understanding as it relates is ruach, is spirit. So some of you need your AC changed and you need a cool, fresh anointing of the spirit of God's understanding. Amen. God bless you. I love you and encourage and edify others. I will see you tomorrow.